Welcome to another Witcher lore video guys. So I was considering what video to make today and I thought to myself that it's actually been quite a while since I made a video on the Witcher religions. So after thinking about which religion to make it on, I finally settled on this religion. As this religion has a lot of association with the Church of the Eternal Fire and really interests me. So I've decided to make today's video on the Church of Creve. Most of the information I'll present to you all about this religion and this god has been gathered from the Witcher tabletop RPG, the Witcher Pen and Paper RPG, which although may not be directly book canon, it can be considered game canon, as CD Projekt Red has officially licensed this game. I'm also going to be weaving in some information from the Witcher Game of Imagination game, and honestly, this lore fits in perfectly anyway. So let's begin. The Church of Creve, or as it is also known, the Cult of Forefather Creve, is a religion mainly worshipped in the Northern Kingdoms. The deity of this religion is the god Creve, who is known as a sky and or thunder god. He's also been associated with many attributes such as power, spontaneity, resourcefulness, decisive action, expansion, defense of ownership, and energy. Interestingly enough, the symbol of this god is a thunderbolt, so this means that he's probably more likely to be a thunder god than sky god, or the two aren't really mutually exclusive, so he may be both. It is unknown whether Creve is a male or female, or without gender, as the gender of this god has never been outrightly said. And currently in the Witch universe, there are no artistic depictions of this god, at least that we've seen in the games, or even the books, so we don't actually have a visual representation of this god. And honestly guys, you never know, this god might not even be human, it might just be, you know, lightning as a substance, or it could just be like, say, the lion-headed spider, a massive spider, we don't actually know. The followers of Creve have a basic belief, and that is to fight against evil of all kinds. Be it an internal evil, for example a personal weakness, or an apparent evil that may threaten someone's life, soul, property, or health. Due to this being a key commandment for the followers of Creve, they are known as exorcists, the opponents of mages, and they are also known to seek out and destroy exotic and or pagan-like cults such as the Cult of the Lion-Headed Spider or the Cult of Lilith. Their priests are also known to be very moralistic, so they follow their own set of morals and they really like to keep to those morals. But it is actually known that some kings managed to co-opt some of these priests, and this eventually led to a lot of these priests' messages being centered around how kings have a divine right and how it is important to give large contributions to the church. So not all of them stick to their morals, but I imagine they probably justified it just by twisting what their morals actually were, you know, saying it was for a higher cause. There is one major mistake the priests of Creve made, and that is something I have actually discussed in my Church of the Eternal Fire video. And this mistake began when the priests of this religion visited Novigrad. When these priests went to Novigrad, they proclaimed that the Eternal Fire was a result of their god visiting Novigrad. Due to the Church of Creve effectively legitimizing the Cult of the Eternal Fire, the Cult of the Eternal Fire then began to grow and take on some tenets of this church. And with time, this new cult became more intolerable to to other religions, and eventually, a large amount of the followers of Creve left the Church of Creve and then joined the Church of the Eternal Fire, simply because they saw this religion's sudden grow in power as a sign that it was more blessed than their current religion. So as you can see, it's a mistake because they lost a lot of their followers by making this religion seem as if it was just a branch of their current religion, when in fact it became an entirely different religion. The religion of Creve is also most popular among knights, monarchs, risk takers, soldiers, and merchants. This religion was known to, on some occasions, cooperate with other religions, those religions being the Cult of Melitella and the Church of the Eternal Fire. The priests of Creve are especially known to argue and have disputes with the priestesses of Melitella, but they do cooperate with them on important issues. The followers of this religion are also very opposed to the Cult of the Lion-Headed Spider, and actively seek to stamp this religion out. I did briefly discuss this also in my Cult of the Lion-Headed Spider video, and if you want to find out more about that, I'd recommend going and watching that video. As for this religion's temples, one of this religion's larger temples is in the city-state of Bearfield. It does also have a large temple in the city of Rhind. Either of these temples may potentially be this religion's grand temple, but we do not know if they are, or if this religion even has a grand temple. It may be similar to the Cult of the Lion-Headed Spider, where there isn't really a center of the religion and it's kind of just sprawled out. This religion is also known to have prejudice against unassimilated non-humans. The military arm of this religion the Order of the White Rose, which was founded by Hughes de Napier, 
Harpies actively helped in the extermination of the Vrans and the suppression of Aelorens Rebellion. Important members of this religion include the priests Krep and Olcan, and it is worth noting that Olcan seem to worship the gods Freya and Melatella, and other important members include the Grandmasters of the Order of the White Rose, which include Hughes de Napes and Rudolf Valaris. Finally, for some trivia. The name Kreve means charge or claim in Norwegian, which definitely seems to mirror this god. Anyway guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. This religion's quite interesting to me. I think it's such a cool religion. I think it's kind of cool that this religion stoked the fires that made the Eternal Fire such a big religion. I mean, you can see its effect in The Witcher 3. It's also just quite a big religion throughout the Witch universe. I mean, it's arguably the biggest religion other than the Great Sun, and the Church of Kreve caused it to be this big, or at least was a contributing factor. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate if you could like it. It genuinely helps out the channel and it's very kind of you to do. These videos take me a long time to do, so liking the video is just such a kind thing to do and I want to say thank you to every single one of you that does that. If this is the first video you're finding on my channel, I do Witcher lore videos, I do other lore videos, at least I'm trying to, I do gameplay every few days, so if you want to make sure you're in tune for those videos and you don't miss them, be sure to subscribe as then you'll get the videos in your subscription box. And also, be sure to follow me on Twitch, I do live streams on there in a schedule. I haven't been able to keep to it recently as I've been very very busy but I plan to get back to it soon so if you want to make sure you don't miss those live streams where I play games, chat to you guys, you guys can talk to me about stuff, it's quite fun, be sure to follow me on Twitch as then you'll get a notification for when I do go live. Also of course be sure to follow me on Twitter, I do updates on there whenever anything interesting is happening, whenever there's new things with the channel, whenever new videos come out I post them on there so then you get sort of a second way to see them in case YouTube doesn't send them to your subscription box which it does do sometimes. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any updates that I might put out on there. For example, I might retweet some Witcher Netflix stuff, which I'll probably make videos on eventually, but if you want to make sure you're just in tune for all that, be sure to follow me on Twitter. And finally, as always, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges. You guys are honestly amazing. It's so, so calm what you do. You help up with the channel so much. It's so calm what you do. Thank you all so much. You help with the videos, and you're just all amazing. I'm glad to put every single one of your names at the end of these videos. If you want to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch, donate to me on Patreon, all the links are in the description. If you want to do any of that, I'd really appreciate it, so thank you to every single one of you that does that. Anyway guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week.